Hi students, this is Dr. Zimmerly, and I may or may not be your instructor for EDUC 3040 or 5540 instructional technology, but I am going to explain to you all what I'm looking for or what your instructor is looking for with the live binder assignment. So you should be on this page if you're not. Um, have this page uh, maybe opened up so that you can follow along with the tutorial video. Uh, first of all, you will have needed to follow the steps for number one. So you would need to make sure that you're logged into your Gmail account. You would click on file um, and make a copy of this document and then um, give it your last name, first initial in the name area. And that way you've got a copy to work from for yourself. Next, I would want you to watch the intro video on the LifeBinders website create um, a free account for yourself on LifeBinders. And then after you do that, um, this is the tutorial video that you're watching right now, but after you create that LifeBinders account, you should land on um, sort of a dashboard area. So I'll show you mine. I have a couple binders in here and um, I'm gonna show you how to create your own LifeBinder for the LifeBinders assignment um, called the Technology Toolkit. So. If you're logged into LiveBinders, you'll probably be on this dashboard page. If not, just click My and it should bring you here. And you're going to click on New Binder. And then if you go back to the Google Doc, it gives you some instructions about um, what to name it, what to put for the description, and so on. So I'm going to go over that. We're going to call this your last name, first initial. In this example, I'm going to pretend to be Justin Timberlake, so I'm going to be Timberlake J, and then put in Technology Toolkit. For description, put in your course um, number, and if you're taking 5540, then you would just simply replace 3040 with 5540. 5540 is the graduate level um, of this course. For tags, you can leave that blank. For category, let's choose Education. Uh, we're going to change it from private to public, that way others can view it. And I definitely, um, you know, you want your instructor to be able to see it, but I also recommend keeping it public even after this course ends. Because if you do a good job with this, you can put a link to it on your resume or um, on your LinkedIn account. And then when you go for interviews, principals will be able to see the hard work that you've done here. Next, click Create New Binder. All right, so we have just done... Um, steps 4a through e and now we're going to go in and um, look at some of the settings here so click on settings this all looks good but let's um you know let's give it your your actual name here to give yourself credit and then let's go into access this is important because i want your work to be your own i don't want any others copying your work so for access, change public copyable to public copy disable. Um, you would only use a key um, if you wanted to have this password protected, but we do not want it to be password protected. We want people to be able to view it. And then um, we're going to click save here. And it lets us know it was uh, updated successfully. Um, let's X off of that and now let's talk about some of the other features here. So we just went over, oops, we just went over access. You can change the colors of this if you would like to, so long as your colors are pleasing and attractive to the eye. Um, of course, don't do like um, tone on tone or, or use any colors that are sort of mismatched and difficult to read. You want it to come across as professional um, but also attractive. So you can use these default colors or change those if you would like. Um, layout, you do have some of these features for free to change and customize if you would like to. You don't have to do that though. It just changes the way that the tabs are organized. And then cover allows you to further customize the binder so that when it's on your shelf or when others go to view it, they see um, an image here. You can upload your own image, um, search for images or search from your files for an image and um, put that there if you would like to just to customize it. All right, um, let's click save just to make sure that when we change that access, yes, that that did save. Now I'm gonna X off of this. And let's X off here too. Every once in a while, you'll see a little message pop up that says um, like binder updated successfully. It's sort of like an auto save feature, but I don't quite trust it. And I don't want you to fully trust that either. So every so often, just like when you're working um, in the Microsoft Office suite, 
always go up here and click save just every so often it'll make you feel better to click that because I'm not so sure that I trust that auto feature or auto save feature all the way so do click save as you're working now let's talk about how to create tabs because for this assignment you will create um, tabs just like with a regular binder just like when you were maybe in middle school or high school you would have a binder three ring binder and you would put some divider pages in that binder and then maybe those divider pages let you know oh here's a here's a divider for my math class and then you put all of your math papers behind that tab and then maybe the next tab was for science and you put all your science papers behind that tab so the idea of a live binder is very similar it's like a digital binder so we're going to create tabs for all of the in-task standards that are covered in this course and then you can go into each of those tabs and list the websites um, I refer to those in the document as resources so you can list those websites that pertain to that in-task standard and then you would be talking about how you would use those websites in your own classroom so notice that they start you off with three tabs and we're going to customize those, customize those just by clicking in there and we're going to call this one in-task three we'll call this an in task four guess what in task five and then we're going to continue to add tabs all the way up through number 10 so to do this in this menu up here over on the left hand side click on tab and keep going until you get all the way up to number 10 in this course um, we are currently covering in task standards 3 through 10 but um, that's not to say that maybe one day in a future semester we we try to tackle all those in task standards so if you're watching this uh, maybe in a future semester and you're thinking well now we have to cover in task standards 1 and 2 just know that 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 may be something that we look at adding in the future but for now you just have to cover in test standards 3 through 10 and so um, now we have done the last step of the um, setup of the binder here. Now I did create a shell live binder that I'll show you. It just has very, very little content, but it kind of gives you an idea of what the live binder will start to look like as it takes shape. So we're going to take a look at that now. You can see here I did create an image and here I talk about how I did that. And um, that way people can see the image of my live binder here before they even start opening up these tabs. This is not required. This would just be something extra if you would like to do it. I also have a couple other extra tabs. I have a welcome tab where I welcome guest of the live binder. I have an about me tab where I give some more information about myself. Again, if you are using this on a resume, I would recommend that you customize it further so that whoever is looking at it can get to know you even better. But these, again, these are all optional. What you have to do would be starting here with task Standard 3. And I have given this the name um, here, task 3, Learning Environments. And here is the statement that goes along with that. And you can also find those if you go back to the Google Doc. You can find those also here where I have the standards listed. You could copy and paste those directly from here into your um, live binder if you would like that is optional but then you can see here I have one resource listed um, and the requirement for this assignment going back to that Google Doc is that if you are an undergraduate student it says here if you're an undergraduate student you should include a minimum of three resources or think of those as websites under each in test standard tab if you are a graduate student watching this, you need a minimum of six websites under each in test standard tab. So in my example, I just gave an example of, of one, and that would be Class Dojo. In here, notice I have two rather lengthy paragraphs to describe the Class Dojo website, and that is part of the requirement of the assignment is that not only are you putting links to these websites in your live finder, but you're also writing two paragraphs about that resource. And I'm really specific with what I'm looking for with those paragraphs. Here are the specifics. Include a rationale for each resource made up of two paragraphs. 
a summary paragraph and an application paragraph. For this project, a paragraph will be considered a minimum of four sentences. You are welcome to write more than that. The first paragraph should summarize what the website or app or tool is or does. The second paragraph should explain specific examples of how that would be used in your classroom. And so that's what I did here in my example. You can see that this just writing about this one website could easily take you um, 20 to 30 minutes just for one. And so then you multiply that um, by three. So I would say probably you're going to need to spend at least an hour writing these um, paragraphs for each standard and then multiply that by eight because in test standards three through ten, that's a total of eight different standards would be about eight hours. And that would be the minimum requirements for undergrad students. So if you're a graduate student, you know, you could plan on doubling that. So you can see why this assignment takes so long. It's not that it's difficult to use the tool. It's not that LiveBinder is so difficult. It's that there is a lot of work that goes into it. So um, let me show you how I would create that Class Dojo resource. So this is considered a tab, and I just clicked on it. So now if I want to do add a sub tab to end test standard three, I would click on sub tab. So now this tab is nested underneath the end test standard three one. So I'm just going to call this class dojo. Now I would get the URL for class dojo. And I'm going to paste that in and then click insert. So now that um, preview of the website has shown up. Let me just say there are some websites that even after you enter the address here, they will not pop up with a preview picture and that is because those certain websites, there's just a few, but there are some educational websites that will not allow their content to be previewed in Live Binders. So if that happens to you, it is okay. It's not your fault. Um, there are some workarounds with that. You could just um, maybe take a screenshot of that website and insert it as an image. Um, but now to get that area where you can create your paragraphs, we're already in class, the Class Dojo sub tab. And so now I'm going to click on settings. No, wait. I'm going to, sorry, I'm going to click on content because I want to change how the content looks. And I'm going to click on text. And now I can choose. Um, do I want my text on the left side, the right side? Do I want it to be um, like a narrow column? Or do I, you know, do I want it to be a narrow column on the right? So um, because I want to keep that image of my media, I'm going to choose either this one or this one or the narrow one or the other narrow one because I like to have that image of the media. So I'll just choose this one. And then... Um, I'm going to exalt it here. Now I'm going to go up here and click save because it's been a little while since I saved that. Now, if you want to, you can also um, add a title up here. Like you might want to say, Vice Dojo is a great behavior management tool. Now you, you don't have to do that, obviously. Um, but what you do have to do is come in here and add two paragraphs to summarize your website and to tell how you would use that in your own classroom. So now um, I'm going to click save here. Okay, so let's go back to the directions page. Now you might be wondering, well, how did she even come up with that Class Dojo website? How did she know that that fit under NTest Standard 3? So I have done a lot of work on the front end curating websites that I am sure meet those in test standards. So I've tried to take some of the guesswork out of this for you. So if you look down here at the rubric to see how you're going to be graded, for each of the standards I put a link to the Life Under Links list that I've created. And it's, it sort of narrows the playing field just a little bit. So what I've done is for each of these in test standards I've created a list of some excellent resources that could meet your needs but that also meet the requirements of each standard. So you could pick any three from my list that I've tried to narrow down for in-test standard three. 
And then the same thing as you go on. When you get ready for intestine standard four, pick three of these and so on and so forth until you get all the way through intestine standard 10. You can pick three of these. Now you are not limited to these. If you find a website on your own, you are welcome to use that. You don't just have to stick to this list, but I did create this list to try to take some of the guesswork out for you. Um, and so Class Dojo is here on this list. So that's how I learned about that. If I was a student, I would go in here, I would learn about Class Dojo, and I might even sign up for a free teacher account to really figure out how it works. And then from that, I could write my um, summary paragraph to summarize what it is, and then my other paragraph to give a rationale or to give some examples about how to use that in my classroom. And then when I was ready to put in the next sub tab, um, I'm going to click on end test standard three, click on sub tab again, and then maybe I, for the next one I would go with, maybe I would go with Google Docs for the next one. I would think about how I can use Google Docs in the classroom, and then I would go into here, Google Docs, paste that website, insert, then go to content, oops, change it so that I can put my text in here, go in, add my text, and then every so often remember to click save. So this is what you're doing throughout the project. And I call this a project because it's more than just an assignment that can be done in, in a day or two. You really need to spend a lot of time on this so that so that um, you are learning about all the resources that you could take advantage of in your classroom and so that you can put a link to this on your resume and show off all the hard work that you've done. All right, now when you are done with that life binder and you are ready to turn it in for a grade, here we go, um, you will notice on this document there's only one place that you put something in and it's right here. Um, so you're gonna paste the link to your life binder here. Now you might be thinking, oh, I can just go up here and copy and paste this in. But that's not really the case because this is the editing area. This is where you go in to edit the binder. So, always remember to click save every so often. Now we're going to go to my binders. And this is the one I was just working on. So let's say that was the one, whoops, sorry. <laughs> this is the one I was just working on. So let's say that that was the one that I had just finished and I'm ready to share that with my instructor click on options and then share this life finder. This gives you the correct URL to be able to share with your instructor. And then um, just also make sure that it does say public so that your instructor will be able to see it. So I'm gonna copy this link and then I'm just gonna paste it in. And then after you paste it, just always hit the spacebar button, or sorry, the spacebar on your keyboard and that way it'll turn it into a live link It'll be hyperlinked so your instructor can click right there on it. Then when you scroll down to the bottom of this document, it walks you through the steps of how to turn this into Schoology. Just like um, any other documents that you've turned into Schoology thus far. You follow the directions here to share the document by clicking share, get share of a link, change can view to can edit, and then um, turn that into Schoology. There is one more place that you are going to turn this in and it's to live text. Now let me say, if it is um, not one of the last weeks of the semester that your instructor has this due, then probably live text will not be available yet for you to submit it. So if your instructor is having you do this um, maybe near the middle of the semester, chances are when you log into live text, there will not be a place for you to turn this in on live text. So just remember one of the last weeks of this semester, you will need to log into live text and then there should be an area that says EDUC 3040 or EDUC 5540 key assessment. And then you would follow these directions to turn it in. So you turn it into Schoology and you also at the end of the semester turn it into live text. All right, I hope that this instructional video tutorial was useful to you. And if you have questions, please reach out to your instructor. Get started on this right away so that it turns out to be the best that it can possibly be. And so you will be proud of it and you will get a good grade on it and be able to use it in an interview setting to get your job. All right. Good luck.